Hello, this is Simzart, an illustrator and comic book artist. Today, I'm going to briefly show how to give a digital watercolor look to an illustration. Watercolor is a great technique that involves brushes, water, and of course, watercolor paint. The final result may vary according to the techniques that the artists use, but some effects are common to every watercolor painting. When we draw digitally, getting the same effect can be tough, but a program like Clip Studio Paint can help. The key to achieve a similar look to real watercolors is to be able to get digitally some of the core effects that we get traditionally. Open a new project with your favorite size, mine is around 3000 by 3500 with a resolution of 300 dpi and leave the tick on paper color. Use a basic expression color, color, so our picture will not be in grayscale. Then press OK. The first thing that I do is to arrange all the layers I'm creating in the right order. In order to keep the layer structure in check, I look at the layer window. Here, I can see all the layers currently in a project. For example, I like to put the textures above the line art layer, while the colors will be painted below it. I also group different layers in folders, which is really useful to keep the layer hierarchy clean and readable. From this window, I can also toggle some options that I'm going to explain later. Don't forget to change the paper color to something that actually resembles a sheet of paper. One of the first things that we notice looking at traditional watercolors is that the surface on which we paint affects the final texture of the paint. Watercolor, plain or rough paper, every type of surface is going to show through the transparent layers of paint. In order to achieve this effect digitally, we have to make sure to place a texture that gives the same effect. To get a nice texture, we can follow different ways. The one I prefer is to create them myself using real paper. I take a paper sheet and make a photo in a well-lit area. In alternative, I scan it with a scanner. The direction on which the light hits the surface of the paper is gonna change the look of the texture in the final picture. Once I have a well-lit photo of the paper, I just open it in Clip Studio Paint. The texture can be opened in Clip Studio Paint and copy-pasted in our project. We can move it around using the moving tool. We can also resize, scale, rotate and edit in many ways. The tools to transform a layer are in Edit, Transform. Here. I can find any important tool to manipulate the texture shapes. I also change the colors of the texture in black and white in order to eliminate any color cast. To do so, I go to Edit, Tonal Correction, Hue Saturation Luminosity or press Ctrl U on the keyboard and move the saturation slider all the way left. I also adjust the brightness and contrast in Edit, Tonal Correction, Brightness Contrast, so that the texture looks nice and clean. When I'm happy with the look of the texture, I click on Edit, Convert Brightness to Opacity. This will turn the white parts of the texture in transparent pixels. At this point, in the layer window, I press and keep pressed Ctrl Shift and click on the texture layer thumbnail multiple times until I see the selection marks. This will select the shadows of the texture. With this selection active, I create a new layer, invert the selection, select Invert Selected Area in the menu, and fill the selected area with white. With this method, I split the texture into layers, one that contains the shadows of the paper texture and one that contains the highlights. The two texture layers can be grouped in a folder, but before I can start drawing, I have to adjust their opacity, lowering it according to our necessity, and changing their blending mode. I like to use Multiply for the shadow layer and Screen for the highlight layer of the texture, 
We can change the blending mode of a layer in Clip Studio Paint, clicking on the layer and then on the menu on top. In the layer window, that contains all the different blending modes, the default mode is normal. I like to create a new layer below the texture folder and use it for the line art. The blending mode for my line art is usually multiply or color burn, depending on the effect I want to and the colors I'm going to use. Below the line art, I create another layer or multiple layers that I like to set on multiply for the coloring part. I like sometimes to experiment with different blending modes, but the most common when I work to achieve a watercolor look are normal. Every time I need an opaque color that doesn't mix with the color below, multiply for the colors and color burn, screen, lighten and overlay for some special effect lighting. I keep the latter one really limited and often I don't use them at all to avoid the overprocessed digital looks. A really useful tool I use is the clipping masks. Given two or more layers, with this tool it's possible to clip them together so that the contents of the ones above won't show on the transparent areas of the layer set on the bottom. For example, I use this technique to paint a character's shadows or highlights on top of the flat colors layer, without worrying about getting the color mixed using only one layer. A very useful tool for non-destructive process when I need extreme customization, maybe later during the making process. Similarly to a clipping mask, Locking transparent pixels is an option that I use when, after painting a certain shape on an empty layer, I want to add variations without ruining the edges of the shape. For example, when painting a character flats. I start from the silhouette of the character using a single color. At this point, I lock the transparency of the layer and color the individual colors of each part, without worrying of ruining the shape painted initially. It's very similar to clipping masks, but with the difference that it's faster and changes the pixel of the layer since it operates on the layer itself. It's particularly useful when a granular customization isn't needed. However, I don't always use transparent pixel or clipping masks when coloring, but these tools can be very handy in many situations and they're powerful tools in every artist toolset. With the lock transparent pixels, we reach the end of this video. In the next video, we'll see how to use these tools to create a character design. If you find this information useful, don't forget to leave a comment, a like and a subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching! If you like this video, you can find more about my work on Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. See you next time!